Hey guys, welcome back. You see that video title? That's an all caps title, baby, and you know what that means. We got some infinite news. Well, leaks, not news, but still, it's something new nonetheless. The other day, Brad Sams, a reporter over at Thorot.com, leaked a bunch of details about the future of Xbox, and of course, Halo was mentioned. Now, before we start, just remember that at the end of the day, these are still leaks, so take everything that I say with a pinch of salt and remember that none of this is any form of official confirmation. However, with that said, the source of these leaks is, in my opinion, incredibly trustworthy. Brad has a really damn good track record when it comes to leaks, and he's leaked plenty of things before that have been extremely accurate, that pertain to Microsoft, Xbox, and hell, even Halo. He was the one who leaked Infinite the day before it was announced, so if you were to ask me personally whether or not I trust these leaks, I would say about 99% yes. So, let's get down to the juicy stuff. The first leak you'll be happy to know is the supposed release date. Now, the entire report focuses on the next line of Xboxes, which Brad says are going to be releasing in fall 2020 with Halo Infinite as a launch title. And there it is. I mean, we all knew deep down that it was coming, but it seems that Halo Infinite will be releasing in fall 2020. That means that we still have over a year and a half to wait. However, don't, don't fret just yet. Just because the game won't be releasing for like another year and a half doesn't mean that we're going to have to wait that long to play it. Like I've said a load of times already, the flighting program is almost guaranteed to begin this year, which means that by the end of the year, many of us will have likely played Infinite. Granted, testing the game isn't quite the same as playing the full release, but it's still, it's better than nothing, and at the end of the day, it's helping make the final release of the game as good as it can be, which, at this point, is something that Halo drastically needs. Also, if you don't plan on getting the next Xbox when it comes out, then seriously, do not worry. Infinite is still going to be 100% playable on the original Xbox One, the Xbox One S, the X, and the new one, and also, of course, PC as well. So, anybody worrying about having to buy another new Xbox just to play Infinite, don't worry. That shouldn't be an issue. Now, the second leak is something that you're either going to love or you're going to hate, so brace yourself. Brad goes on to say that 343 are trying to make Infinite Story adapt to the decisions the user makes and that the game may have more RPG elements than prior versions of the series. And if you remember, that actually isn't the first thing that we've heard about RPG elements making their way into Infinite. A few months ago, I covered a job posting at 343 asking for somebody with familiarity with RPG and shooter game mechanics. So. The signs were already there. Could Halo Infinite be the first mainline Halo game to deviate away from being a conventional FPS? Maybe so. I highly doubt that it's going to end up being like a full-blown RPG in the way that Elder Scrolls and Fallout are, but there's a lot of evidence right now pointing towards it being a lot more free and open than previous games. The most likely outcome, if you were to ask me, is that it's going to be a sort of semi-open world, possibly even shared world game, sort of like Destiny, that allows you to explore Zeta Halo with your friends or even on your own if you choose to. And there might actually be some small pieces of evidence that support this. Firstly, the Infinite trailer was very clearly hinting at more open level design. But then there's also a few things that Frankie said on Twitter. In December last year, he basically said that the game is going to have dynamic weather and that exploration of the environments is going to be rewarded. And then way back in March 2017, he hinted at the next Halo game being much more open. Sadly, the context of this tweet was deleted, but as you can see in the replies, that's more or less what he was on about, and I can pretty much personally vouch for this because I remember this tweet circulating at the time. But more significantly, if we go back roughly to this time last year, there was a leak from a pretty respectable Xbox leaker called Clobriel, which I later found out meant toilet seat in German. Lovely. In his leak, he hinted at the next Halo having a really high player count, aka connections per session. Now, if Infinite were to be a Destiny-styled shared world game, 
then this would make perfect sense. As for the fact that the story adapts the decisions we make in game, that could mean multiple endings, but I honestly don't see any way that that could work with Halo's story. Given how, like, tightly canon everything is now, it'd mean that only one ending could be canon, obviously, which essentially makes all the other endings sort of redundant and pointless, at least in the grand scheme of things. To get around that, maybe it's going to be done in a much more subtle way. Instead of taking the Mass Effect or Dead Rising route, where each game has like 10 different endings, maybe it's going to take a sort of Resident Evil 4 route, where we can customise our loadouts and stuff as we progress through the campaign, which then allows us to take on each mission differently and approach it in a different manner every time we play it. Maybe that's what Frankie meant by exploration being rewarded. Maybe, I don't know, we can find like weapons or weapon attachments or gear or equipment in the environment that we can then take back to our base and then equip for the next mission. Or, alternatively, maybe both the RPG and adaptive story leaks could be pertaining to something that happens after you finish the main vanilla campaign with Chief. Maybe the main campaign with Chief is a pretty traditional linear campaign where you can go to a menu and select which mission you want to play at any point. But then after you finish that, maybe you unlock a sort of Spartan Ops meets open world type thing, where your own Spartan is made sort of semi-canon and you're sent on missions to explore the Halo and unlock stuff. You can sort of see what I'm getting at here. Ultimately, these two new details make it seem like Infinite is going to be an entirely different beast to what we're used to. I mean, whether or not that's a good thing, we'll only know with time, but it's certainly intriguing. And finally, we have another more minor leak that doesn't exactly pertain to Halo Infinite, but I don't know, it's still pretty cool and it's still definitely worth mentioning. So, if you didn't know, recently Microsoft and Nintendo have sort of become buddies, and an apparently reliable French gaming site known as Zhu Gaming, I, I think, have leaked some of the details of this new friendship. Now, not only are Xbox Live, Game Pass, and a bunch of Xbox exclusives supposedly coming to Switch, but apparently, one of the members of the so-called Xbox Golden Triangle, which of course is Halo, Gears of War, and Forza, could likely be coming to Switch as well. Now, could this finally mean that we can play Combat Evolved on the go? Man, I really hope so. To be fair, I imagine that Halo 2 and Combat Evolved are about the only Halo games that are capable of running well on the Switch's hardware, so honestly, it wouldn't shock me. I think it's fair to say though that Infinite definitely will not be making its way to the Switch anytime soon. And so, that's all for today's leaks. Let me know your thoughts on this whole RPG adaptive story stuff down below in the comments. Just one thing though, one request. Please, no matter what your opinions are on this new direction that Halo could take, just, just make sure they aren't the same as this guy's. Nay, it was heresy. <laughs>